I am enjoying it much more than Tales of Arise, which was way overrated. Tell me why! <laughs> Best Starship. <laughs> Starship 6, Starship the Divine Force is out. Um, and it is currently sitting at mixed reviews. Now it's only out of 389, so, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to be playing it, not anytime soon. I don't know, 999 mixed reviews. Uh, but, you know, whenever this price drops below 40 bucks, we'll find out how good this Star Ocean is. <laughs> I want to look at the Steam reviews, and I want to check what people are saying. But, it's a JRPG. It's a Star Ocean game. It is a big... It's thick! Long... And it's hard! ...game, alright? And it's coming to get ya! I can't sort by... Time? Okay. Uh, well, here's the deal. I'm gonna scour through these reviews, and we are going to read only reviews that have at least 15 hours, not on record, you know, but the review was written at least after 15 hours. So we got a review here from 12.6 uh, hours on record. When was the review written? Written at 1.7 hours. Out of what? I don't know how long to beat. And, and I don't imagine we have a full how long to beat for Stars and the Divine Force just yet, but, I mean, maybe. Uh, I'm gonna say probably a 40-hour game, maybe even more. It's a JRPG, you never know. So I'm gonna say that a review of the game with less than 15 hours, I'm not calling credible. That's just me. That's just me. Hands up. That's just me. So let's find some heavy hitting reviews that reach credible status. 41 hours on record. Review 0 0.6. 0 0.6 when you wrote the review? Recommended? How you recommend a game when you just watch the intro? 26 hours on record. 26 hours to the review? That's weird. Huh. At time of review, on record. I, I guess this just means that the person put the review the same time, I guess? But yo, this is a long A review. I'm glad they include the TLDR. We, we about to hit that up. Um, uh, had I written this in the first hours of the game starting, I have prob I would have probably recommended it. So, go ahead and just crap on everybody else who put up the reviews that we've been looking at that were in the first couple of hours. Um, but unfortunately, the game's flaws become more and more apparent as you continue playing. That's what I'm saying! That's why I want a review with some hours on it. Is that too much to ask? Uh, I haven't yet finished the game at the time of writing this. Obviously not. You ain't even 50 hours. Ooh, do you a third of the way through? But as much as I loved previous Star Ocean games, by far, wait, bar the fifth one. I was like, by far the fifth one? Really? We got final, uh, final. We got Star Ocean five stands out here. Oh God. But now barring the fifth one, fair enough. Uh, I feel I need to warn people about the flaws I've encountered. We'll read the pros, we'll dip into some of the cons, and then we hitting up that TLDR. We ain't, ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, the combat system feels pretty good, with the game being fast and reactive. Cool, cool, cool. Cons. Uh, the exploration for collectibles is nice in the first few zones, but as the zones become bigger, they also become emptier, leading to a lot of walking around for very little reward. Okay. Split protagonist stories was was uh, okay was fine at the start, but every once in a while the characters act like you should know something that happened to the other group, while it was never brought up, making certain parts really confusing. All right, all right, combat scaling sucks. The characters 
you start out with are fine at the start. Oop. But you get further wait, but as you get further in, new companions join with abilities with higher base powers than even upgraded abilities on earlier party member. Fair enough. Uh, the crafting system is mostly useless ATM at the moment uh, since it allows you to craft wait, since it allows you to craft equipment which apart from accessories are completely outclassed by what you buy at the shop. This was written, uh, reviewed, supposedly 26 hours in. I mean, that just makes sense, right? You come to a new town, they're just gonna have better stuff at the shop, naturally, or typically. Uh, certain parts of the dialogue and cutscenes seem completely phoned in, or there was some cut content and they never came around to fixing the stuff around it. It's a starshing game. It's a starshing game. Phone din? No. Cringe dialogue? I want to take nappy time with you. <laughs> let's let's not speak of such familiar things. I I, I can't comment on this. I have no idea about a mini game and a starshing game. Don't even look at me. Performance wise, everything seemed great at the start, but later areas are less optimized since I have no. Uh, issues. Wait, since I had no issues being at 60 FPS literally all the time in the first few hours, but now I constantly dip to 50 with spikes lower. Okay, uh, performance having issues, that's something that I know I've seen other reviews, even though I'm not going to bring any of those up because, you know, we're going, going for 15 hours plus, baby, but yeah. The overall, wait, the UI overall is at best average. Um, the blind sight mechanic, I don't even want to read this. I hate the damn blind sight mechanic. Um, yeah, I ain't got much to say. I beat Starshin 4 my first time. I'm going to point out 4 specifically. Uh, without ever using the blind sight mechanic. Like, I literally forgot it existed after the tutorial, right? And then I played through Starshin 4 again utilizing blind side it's whatever it's whatever it's the blind side mechanic yeah yeah uh the characters all feel pretty bland no uh <laughs> let me stop uh so it's hard to get attached to any of them especially with events sometimes being paced weirdly making their decisions seem completely out of place is that a period so we can stop reading thank you oh dear god thank you but yeah, bland characters in a JRPG. Oh my god. Yeah, you're gonna have bland characters. You're gonna have cliche characters. And then you're gonna have your diamonds in the rough. Shout out to Oren. Woo! This is my story. And you're not part of it. TLDR. The combat is relatively enjoyable, but there's so many little annoyances in every other aspect that it starts making the game in general more annoying than enjoyable okay okay thank you for your 26 hours on record that was the first credible review we have okay none of the other reviews are credible because they wrote their reviews less than damn five percent of the game done get it out of here 33 hours on record but you wrote this 10% of that ago. Come on. 23 hours on record. Reviewed at 7 hours. Get it out. Get it out. 27 hours on record. 27 hours to review. <laughs> Best. <laughs> oh you would think that I had cherry picked this one or that I had wrote it myself. <laughs> but I don't own this game on Steam. I'm not even logged in doing this. Um. Uh, Comments are disabled for this review. How did that happen? Is that something you can do? Can you do that? I don't know. I've never done anything on the reviews I've left. Can you just make it so people can't comment? Or did it just get so freaking hate filled in the comments of this that they just were like, oh, we got to disable these comments. Uh, Cause Starship 3 is like the most polarizing in the series. It is one of those love-hate games. 
a decent amount of franchises you might find that people's favorites happens to be the first one that they ever played in it uh and for me that was starship 3 to this day i have played through the other starship games minus six which we're currently talking about of course um and i still say starship 3 is my favorite i just love the mechanics of it as well as the characters pepita albel let's go we gotta save the world let's go no not roger no not you roger roger no but yeah this review yo i i need to log in just to thumbs up this review i love it best starship game since three it's credible all right so it's the second credible review we have and there you have it factual that starship three was the last good starship game <laughs> uh 15 hours you wrote the review at 14.9 you were so close you were this close to being a credible review 13 nope 27 hours on record 17.9 here we go another credible review <whistles> all right all right all right it's not bad couple minor nuisances wait a minute yeah okay i thought they said nuances for a second a couple minor nuisances but a decent rpg otherwise mixed rating kind of surprised me it's better than that how much better though how much better are we talking minor stutters on a higher end p uh, machine but nothing that's a big deal just random momentary blips that aren't too common i9 37 ti yo pause pause what's what's the pause button that i set up to hotkey for obs oh unpause did it unpause i don't know the damn hotkeys uh so i don't know about a can i run it but here's what we got for Star Ocean, uh, the newest Star Ocean, the Divine Force. Uh, so supposedly, 4 gigs of RAM, easy clap. And these are the minimum requirements, by the way, not the uh, recommended. Uh, an, in, uh, an NVIDIA 510, a GeForce 510, ew! Yo, how old are we talking? Uh, two core duo. And size is unknown. I think it's like 70 gigs. Uh, hold up. Hold up. Let me see this. Right here. Hold up. Right here. System minimum requirements. At least an i7. 16 gigs of RAM. But this person is saying that with an i9. 3070 Ti. They're still having issues. Like, hold up. Hold up. Because they say... It's not a big deal, but the fact that you're on a higher end PC and encountering this stuff seems kind of like a big deal to a schlub who doesn't have a higher end PC. 20 hours, 10 hours, 2 hours, 20 hours in, you wrote the review at 2, 33 hours, 29 hour review, and you have the same icon and border that I have on my Steam, so, you know, this, this should be good. Don't listen to the haters. Okay, you know what, maybe I lied. Most complaints are because they don't have the rigs to run it or do not want to use a controller. Well, I've actually skipped over pretty much every review that I've deemed uncredible because I haven't reached at least 15 hours before writing the review. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that if, if, regardless of the credibility of the review, if your view is like negative or you have a negative opinion of the game, even if you recommended it, because let's say you meet the minimum requirements or you meet the recommended requirements and the game still has uh, a decent amount of performance issues, I'm gonna say that that's a credible complaint to have. I'm gonna say that, all right? I don't think you're a hater personally. <clears throat> uh, run it or do not wanna use a controller. I wouldn't you. Whatever. Uh, last Star Ocean game I played was Last Hope. Star Ocean 4. Uh, so I was very excited to see a new one. Great story so far, beautiful world, and fun gameplay. And this is coming from somebody basically 30 hours in. So, you know, credibility to that. I rate the game in my top two favorite JRPG releases of the year. Personally, I am enjoying it much more than Tales of Arise, which was way overrated IMO. <laughs> oh 
No. Yo, I think I know why the comments are disabled on this one. Oh no. Woo. 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 Okay. Okay. Okay, I see you. Tales of Arise. Overrated. I mean, it's 30 hours. It's a credible review. It's a credible review. I can't argue with it. This one says you've played 41 hours. 38 hours of review. Okay. Okay, we got another credible one here. And it is long. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll do my best. Let's give it two sentences per paragraph or bullet point. How about that? How about that? Incredibly awesome. Ah. Uh, <laughs> a good timing, good timing. Okay. Ah, uh, that nostalgic Schadenfreude to once again barge into people's houses and steal their loot. I'm counting that as a sentence. Screw you. No. No, that's an ellipsis. Come on. But it still still ended this. The combat is amazing, especially when using someone other than Raymond. Yeah, what which what what shall be for Raymond? I even like using the healer who can't target enemies. That's weird. The Duma flying orb used for flying and dashing mechanic is amazing for exploring wide open areas and will hopefully set a trend for similar mechanics in other games with larger zones. We pass in on that. Okay, universe difficulty tips. We don't need to read any of this. We don't need to read any tips or about the difficulty. Um, critiques, releases, uh, release bugs, and defects. In my personal opinion, Duma's exploration ability for finding chests and bunnies is too limited to the first exploration of zones. I have no idea what the heck that even means. I have no idea what that means. Exploration ability for finding chests and bunnies is too limited to the first exploration of zones. What does it mean? What does that mean? I can't comprehend. I'm not even joking. I literally don't even know how to interpret what I'm just reading. In my personal opinion, Dumas, which is the flying orb thing that lets you explore faster. Exploration ability for finding chest and bunnies is too limited to the first exploration of zones. I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is, we, we ain't even counting that sentence. Do not count that sentence. I would have liked to have seen chests along with enemies respawn with scaling rewards for replayability. Yeah, no. No, just no. Just no to that. And it's not me saying no because, you know, I think that's a bad idea or anything. That's just no because that's not how Star Ocean or other JRPGs work. Um, S Oa, look, I'm gonna mispronounce any name you put up here because I ain't played the game. If following Go rules, oh. Wait, I think I heard about this one. There's like a little mini game in the game. I guess it's called Asoa. If following Go rules should prioritize capture over self-capture. Yeah, we can skip this sentence because it's just a bunch of gibberish to me. Can't craft or sell multiple items at once. And that's the last sentence we're going to read. Uh, can't craft or sell multiple items at once. That, that can't be right. They can't be right. It's a JRPG. It's Star Frickin' Ocean. They've been able to do this always before. It's never been an issue before. I'm gonna say... Did this person mention something like they played other Star Ocean games? Nostalgic... Uh... Blah, 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 blah. Um... No? I'm not seeing something about them playing... As good, if not better, than both Tales of Arise and Scarlet Nexus. Oh my god. Alright. Um, but no, I'm not seeing anything about them saying they've played other Star Ocean games. So, the deal with Tri-Ace. Tri-Ace. And their menuing. Uh, when it comes to shops. And this is in my mind because I was recently replaying through Valkyrie Profile 2. 
the shops and how they handle the menuing in shops is it's different from standard it's, it's kind of weird so i mean i can't imagine that they wouldn't let you uh what is it can't craft or sell multiple items not being allowed to craft multiple items maybe but i can't imagine that if you went to a shop and were trying to sell a bunch of items that they wouldn't let you do that it just seems weird but hey this is a credible review i can't deny it if they're saying that that's a thing that's a thing all right you know what this is bugs and defects let's just finish this one out borderless alt tabbing is goofy especially with multiple monitors also the screen doesn't cover up where windows taskbar hit uh, when you restart the game after using borderless mode party members inventories accessories are not correctly shown when in personal interaction mode the english voice acting for late uh, I'm, I'm gonna butcher this late late tick leticia 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 I'm going to say Leticia for now. Uh, we'll find out what I play the game. Woo! Six months from now, maybe. Who knows? Although done great. Oh. Uh, seems very dissonant with her facial appearance. With her facial appearance. Disconnected? From her facial expressions, I guess? It. Uh, I'd have to know which character that is. It might be main girl. It might be main girl. And would someone please tell Raymond how to pronounce her name correctly? Yo, somebody need to tell me too. Tell me too. Yeah, I restarted and had to see how she introduced herself. Okay. Weird. Weird. Uh, review bombing response. There's a review bombing going on. I know it's uh, rated mixed on Steam, right? So... But I don't know how review bombing it is. IGN review bombed Star Ocean Divine Force. Oh, you're claiming that IGN itself, like the game reviewer that IGN has, bombed the game. Is that a bomb? Is that a bomb? Like, I thought review bombing was like a bunch of people coming in, not just one, you know, platform or publication. But okay, let me let me read this. Let me read this. Get the context. It's a credible review after all. IGN review bombed Star Ocean Divine Force apparently because of square menus and font sizes. Question mark? Wait, what? Square menus and font sizes. I mean, look. I lived through Dead Rising 1. Come on! Follow me. On standard definition television. Font size ain't no joke. Font size ain't no joke. I guess the guy was expecting chibi dolls and purple clover decorations for a fantasy game instead of the clean sci-fi game style. I mean, how important is it to any publication to get somebody familiar with the franchise to review that franchise? How important is that? Or is it better to have a fresh perspective? I wouldn't know. I don't know. I'd have to look at this review specifically, and I'm not gonna do that. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, the zones are big, but they have to be because of how fast you can move with the Duma. That seems valid, depending on how fast you can go. Um, and yes, it's probably not like Xenoblade, but Star Ocean Divine Force doesn't have to be, though. I read that wrong in pronunciation. Uh, I totally lost faith in IGN this time over their random complaints. I'm kind of interested in reading it now. I'm kind of interested in reading it now. I'm not going to go read it. I'm not. I just want to look something up. Star Ocean, The Divine Force. I just want to see. They gave it a 7 out of 10. They gave it a 7 out of 10. Okay, what I wanted to see. I'm not going to go read it. What I wanted to know was what score was this review bomb? It's a 7 out of 10. It's a 7 out of 10. I I'm not... No, no. A 7 out of... Come on. Come on. 5 out of 10 is average. 6 out of 10 is good. 
right? Or, you know, slightly above average if you want to go that route. 7 out of 10 is good. It's definitively good. Unless you're on the scale of 8 is when you pass over to good good, right? But for me, you know, 5 is going to remain average. And so, you know, moving up from 5, you're in the positives. Though, I ain't going to pretend like if I had a game I really loved and it got a 6 out of 10 or a 7 out of 10, I wouldn't be like, whoa, 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 whoa. But still, 7 out of 10 after the review I read, nah. 23 hours on record, 10 hours, no. 16 hours on record, 4 hour review. 37 hours on record, 2.9 hour review. 24 hours on record, 15.6, you barely skate in. Love the username. Blurring it out still. Okay, just started yesterday. You can already tell uh, a lot of work has gone into this. I was about to add the word game for no reason. Immersive, great characters, beautiful scenery. My PC sits somewhere between minimum and recommended specs, and it runs great on high-end graphics. Great combat system, an interesting story. Five out of five so far. I got two beefs with your review. It's still credible, because it's over 15 hours, still credible. Beef number one is the 5 out of 5. That's a perfect score. I could do without that. Just delete the last part of what you added. I don't need to know your score. Alright, because you gave it a perfect score. No. Uh, and then the second thing is that you have a minimum to recommend it sitting PC. We had a dude who had a 3070 talking about having issues still. And according to the reviews we've looked at that have been credible, other people are also having issues. So, I don't know. Inconsistent? Inconsistent. And inconclusive. We got somebody with a minimum to recommend it saying, runs great. And we got somebody whose PC blows mine out the water saying that they ran into some issues. No big deal, but they ran into some. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see if we can get two or three more. What's this? 31 hours, 23 hour review time. This isn't the one we just read, right? Nope. <clears throat> if you like JRPGs and enjoy the earlier installments of the franchise, chances are you'll enjoy this too. Probably not for me, because I hate that they removed the guard mechanic for Blindside. That's right, I'm the guy ranting about their love for Star Ocean 3. Let's go, fight me Austin. <clears throat> I haven't had any technical problems that I've seen in some of the reviews. I've seen it in some reviews too. And it's so inconsistent. Why? Uh, the crafting system is reminiscent of Second Story. Ugh. Ugh. Starship 3 had the best crafting system. Ugh. Fight me. Ugh. <laughs> uh, if you are a vet of the genre, play on the hardest setting. Universe? 4D difficulty? Okay. It's a JRPG, and they are not known for their challenging gameplay. Go play freaking Dragon Quest VIII. Tell me they ain't known for their difficulty. That's bull. Yo, Dragon Quest VIII bullies you out the gate. It gets easier as it goes on. That's some... This is one of those games. Um, it is by no means a groundbreaking game, but I've been enjoying my time so far. And, I'm positive, if you like the genre, you'll enjoy this game. Yeah, I mean, without playing it, obviously, I'm probably going to end up enjoying this, for the most part. Let's try and find one more credible review. 18 hours on record, please don't be... Oh, God. Oh, God, no. I said one more, and this was the next one to pop up. Ah, oh, look at how long this review... Oh, my God. Oh, it keeps going. It keeps going. Comments are disabled. We gotta find the part where they say Tales of Arise is garbage. We gotta find that part because you don't you friggin' get your uh, comments turned off for nothing. Oh my god. I will try. I will try. But we ain't about to spend 18 hours on this. The more I play this game, the more I enjoyed it. The scenery kept on getting better over time. As if they were trying to one-up the last group that worked on a village. The characters became a bit more interesting as the story and the first world began to unfold. As a whole, it is quickly becoming my favorite modern Star Ocean. Leagues better than the last installment. 
but still quite a few steps away from being as great as until the end of time. Mixed currently. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just will have to reserve my honest opinion for when I can myself make a credible at least 15 hour Star Ocean review. I hope that this video did not help in the slightest because that wasn't the intention. The intention was I just gonna read stuff and I might as well do it for a video. Come on. Hey, this wall tastes like dirt.